So this is a completely new example on this one. Completely new example. But as we go down the backbone of the molecule, we've got a bit of a dilemma here when we get to this part. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And we could take a very similar route. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and only diverge with the last two carbons and get another count of eight. So examples here are trying to point out what happens when we have a tie. When we have two roots around the molecule which give the same total number of carbons. Which track, which route do we take? When we compare those two roots, now this one, I'm following snaking down the molecule and finishing here. Again, it's trying to use a stronger bond or a thicker um, line. And it's not coming out very well, so starting there, finishing there, or oh, I can see it in the red there from this one, or starting there and finishing there. So when we have a tie, most of the time you want. Most of the time there will be one chain which is longer than any other flow of carbons. But if there is a tie, choose the route which gives you more branches. If this is the trunk, then there's a branch there because that wasn't counted in the core. There's a branch here because that wasn't counted in the trunk. And there's a single carbon branch there because that wasn't counted as we kept along the back one. So it has one, two, three branches. If our route takes us down this direction, then it gives us a whole branch there and a single carbon branch there, giving us just two branches. We do doing okay. Right. So now looking for the longest continuous chain. But if there's a choice, if you're faced with a choice, choose the direction, choose the flow which gives you more branches on the molecule. And that will lock in the longest continuous chain. Now we have to decide whether this is carbon number one or whether this is carbon number one. So for the numbering of the parent chain, so remember, the start and end points have already been locked in. We are not budging from the start and end points being here. We just don't know whether this is carbon 1 or this is carbon 1. If you look to the right cheek, you see, we like the flow is not changing once we've decided in the longest chain, and if necessary, the longest chain with the most branches. Once we make a decision on something, we're not going to go back on it. So, if you look at the two alternative versions of numbering the main chain from top to bottom or bottom to top, it gives us branch positions at particular points in the molecule. We are going to choose the version which gives us the lowest possible numbering to the branches. Once we've found our longest chain, the longest chain with the most branches, carbon number one will be the end of the molecule. It gives the lowest possible number to the first branch. And again, sometimes that might be a tie. Another example. If we number from the bottom, the first branch appears at carbon number two. There's a single branch, single carbon as an offshoot. 
if we number from the opposite side, we don't get a branch, an offshoot, from the main line until carbon number three. Lower numbering for the first branch, that's our choice. And that locks in the carbons in the main chain. Just to play devil's advocate, let's say that we had a slightly trickier molecule that had a couple of extra bits. So let's say there was an extra bit here and an extra bit here. Just to give us a bit more fun. Oh, hey, hey, a bit more fun. So, now as we try and number, the first branch from the top appears at carbon number two, just as the first branch from the bottom appears at carbon number two. If the two ends of the molecule give a branch at the same position, then look to the next branch. And if those branches give a branch at the same position, look to the next, and then the next, until you get a winner. Is that branch there? Yeah. So there's a branch in position number two. So as we look along the chain at this point, now this is our predicted starting point, where's the first position we see a branch? At carbon one, two. That's the first branch position. Where's the first branch position if we're counting from this end? First branch is a position one, two. So it's two and two. It's a tie. So we have to look for the second branch. Where's the second branch from this end? One, two, three. Where's the second branch from this end? One, two, three. So for both molecules, they start with branches in position two and three. Okay. Then when we get to the third branch, because we still don't have clarity, one, two, three, four, for that branch, and we're looking for the same branch, but we're looking at it from the different end. Now that branch appears at carbon one, two, three, four, five. So now we've finally found a branch which can be numbered more lowly, or can be given a lower number, if we start from the top end of the molecule instead of the bottom. So here are three example molecules. We have the suffix to the name, which is the name ending, A and E. There's no functional groups in these molecules. So they're all going to be alkane to finish A and E. We want to know what the parent alkane is in the molecule core longest chain. As you look at the different starting points and finishing points, the longest continuing chain is from here to here, which is eight carbons long, which means it's based on octane. Eight carbons in the longest chain, that's an octane molecule. We've got a branch which is one, two carbons long. We don't count this carbon because we already counted that when we were counting the main chain. We don't count carbons multiple times. So our branch in the molecule is just two carbons long. If we number from this end, it's one, two, three, four. If we number from this end, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. So that makes up carbon number one. The second molecule, the longest continuous chain is from these two points. If we number the chain from here, we get our first branch at an earlier point in the molecule. One, two, three, compared to one, two, three, four. So this should be carbon number one. And it gives us a single carbon in a branch of methyl, and one, two, ethane branch, which we'll call ethyl. Third molecule, first and last point, the longest, Longest continuous chain of carbons, nine carbons long, anything else is inferior. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is by far the longest continuous chain of carbons. We have therefore one, two branches on the molecule. Again, not counting the carbon, which are already counted in the core chain. One carbon long for a methyl group. One, two, three carbons long for a propyl group. And they appear on the fourth and the fifth carbon. They appear on the third and the sixth carbon. They appear on the fourth carbon. So it's the last step to incorporate that into the core network.